Hello, I'm Sensei Alex Kakuya. The title of today's talk is Buddhist Pets and Buddhist Compassion. Before we get into that, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you'll be notified when I post talks in the future. If you wouldn't mind hitting the like button, that'd be great too. Many years after the historical Buddha passed into Parinirvana, a monk by the name of Upa Gupta had taken up his mantle. Upa Gupta was the Buddha of his age, and as a result, he had the ability to look in the heart of any individual and determine the exact causes and conditions necessary for them to realize enlightenment. Such was the case when he was walking into town and happened upon a dying tiger cub. Out of great compassion, Upa Gupta offered the tiger cub a Buddhist blessing and stayed with it until it passed away. Thanks to the merits the cub received as a result of this blessing, it was reborn in the human realm, and when it came of age, it joined the Buddhist order, studied diligently, and eventually realized enlightenment. Now, on the surface, this story seems very cut and dry, but there are some very important and interesting issues for us to discuss here. First off, it's telling that the sentient being in need is an animal. The animal realm is one of the three lower rebirths in Buddhism. We end up there when we do something wrong. So this individual, this tiger cub, young though it may have been, probably did something incorrect in its previous life to end up in its predicament. The fact that Upa Gupta, the Buddha of his age, stopped to help is an incredible show of not only compassion, but also mercy. In addition to that, it's telling that we're not dealing with a fluffy bunny rabbit. This is ancient India. Remember, tiger attacks were common back then. Upa Gupta probably knew people personally who had been attacked, possibly even killed by tiger cubs. In spite of that, he still had the compassion within him to offer help and a blessing to this dying sentient being. This is a beautiful uh, example of Buddhist compassion and the fact that as for us as individuals, it doesn't matter where we go or what we do, there will always be a Buddha extending their hand and attempting to offer us help. And if a lowly tiger cub is worthy of compassion and mercy, then what does that say about you, about me, about all sentient beings? What it tells me is that we're not only worthy of Buddhist compassion, we're also worthy of Buddhist grace. Now, in addition to compassion, however, Upa Gupta also offered the cub generosity in the way of his Buddhist blessing. Generosity is one of the virtues we attempt to cultivate as part of our own Buddhist practice, and the sutras tell us we can practice it in three ways. We can be generous with wealth, offering people food or money. We can be generous with fearlessness, offering medical attention or protection from the elements in the way of shelter. We can also be generous with the Dharma by either through our own practice, saying an example, or by offering teachings like this one. When we offer generosity to others, we break down the illusion of a separate self. We, bring, we gain a greater understanding of interconnectedness and we take a step towards liberation. Because when we benefit other people, we very naturally also benefit ourselves. Now, it's very cool and interesting to talk about the theory of compassion and generosity in the story, but what does that mean for us in the modern age? What are we supposed to do with this information? Well, if we have pets, it becomes very simple because they are animals. They have taken a lower rebirth, and as a result, they need our help more than ever to find the proper causes and conditions necessary to take a human rebirth and realize enlightenment. And we can offer this to them in a number of ways. First off, just showing compassion, bringing them into our home is a perfect example of Buddhist principles. In addition to this compassion, however, we can also practice generosity. We can give them wealth via toys and food. We can give them 
fearlessness by taking them to the vet for medical protection, giving them shelter, and we can give them the Dharma. When we set a good example by practicing Buddhism in front of them, the bowing, the chanting, the meditating, even though it may seem like they're not taking it in, we are planting karmic seeds that they will carry to their next life. In addition to that, at the end of every service, it's common for Buddhists to say, may the merit of this practice benefit all beings. We should remember that our pets are also included in all beings. We are being generous by offering them a blessing in the same way that Upa Gupta offered a blessing to the tire cup, helping them gain the merit necessary to take a human rebirth and realize enlightenment. When we do this, when we treat our pets well, we break down the illusion of a separate self. We understand the interconnectedness of all living things, and we move both them and us closer to enlightenment. Amitabha.